The Scream is a painting by Edvard Munch and was originally titled The Shade de Nature, meaning The Scream of Nature. It is known as an icon of modern art and is a part of a larger art collection series called The Frieze of Life. Edvard Munch was a Norwegian artist whose family had a history of ill health. His mother and older sister died of tuberculosis and his father also died when he was young. Later on, his other sister developed a mental illness and was put in a mental asylum. He describes how mental illness also plagued his life, stating illness, insanity, and death were the black angels that kept watch over my cradle and accompanied me all my life. Therefore, many of his paintings contain psychological themes, including the scream, which is a representation of anxiety, uncertainty, and mental anguish. The painting was based on one of his own experiences while walking along an overlook on the road Valhavai on Ekeberg Hill in Oslo. While walking with his two friends, which can be seen in the background of the painting, he stopped to rest, feeling anxious, and heard a scream. At the time, a slaughterhouse, as well as a mental asylum where his sister was kept, was located at the base of Ekeberg Hill. Some have revealed that during the time, you could hear the cries when animals were killed and the cries of the patients in the distance, which was likely the scream that Monk heard. There were actually four versions of the painting that he created. The first one was done in 1893 using oil paints, tempera paint, and pastels on cardboard. It is the most widely known of the four. Though it was stolen in 1994, it was recovered with little damage. This version is the only one that has an inscription written in pencil by Monk in the upper left corner of the frame that states, could have only been painted by a madman. The second version was created in 1893 with crayons on cardboard though it is debated whether it is actually the first version of the screen. It is located in the Monk Museum and art historians consider it unfinished due to the fact that the colors are not as vibrant, making it seem washed out. The third version was painted in 1895 with pastels on cardboard. It is the most colorful of the four and has a poem written by Monk on the back. The poem goes, I was walking along the road with two friends. The sun was setting. Suddenly the sky turned blood red. I paused, feeling exhausted, and leaning on the fence. There was blood and tongues of fire above the blue-black fjord and the city. My friends walked on, and I stood there, trembling with anxiety. And I sensed an infinite scream passing through nature. The fourth version was created in 1910 with tempera paint on cardboard, and is the only one with no eyeballs, expressing more anguish. In 2004, it was stolen from the Monk Museum, but was eventually returned with water damage in the lower corner. Along with the four versions, Monk also created a lithograph of his painting, though only 45 copies were made. He experimented with different mediums, showing his creativity and interest in the possibilities that could be created across different media. Rather than painting what he saw standing at the overlook on Eckberg Hill, he painted the feelings he felt at the time as he dealt with anxiety and depression throughout his life. In the painting, the focal point is an androgynous human figure with a skull-shaped head and long hands, wide eyes, flaring nostrils, and an egg-shaped mouth. The figure could be representing Monk himself. In the background is a swirling blue landscape with a fiery orange and yellow sky. He manipulates the lines, colors, light, and shadows to create a horror-anxious, distressed effect. The sky has bold curved lines which flow towards the figure and continue to form the wavy body of the figure, which could represent feelings of chaos and madness. Curved lines also shape the landscape that seem to literally weigh down on the shoulders of the figure. Like the force of its surroundings are building immense pressure on the figure, which could also reflect what Monk felt when he had an anxiety attack as he heard the scream on his walk. They also create strong movement, carrying the piercing scream from the surroundings into the figure. It gives the impression that the painting itself is supposed to transmit sound, as if Monk wanted the viewers to be able to hear the scream as well. On the other hand, the straight lines that make up the bridge, which passes below the figure, and the railing that pierces through the figure, contrast the curvy lines in the landscape and in the figure, and command order whilst moving away from the focal point, fading in the distance and eventually disappearing. The color choices and placement of light and shadows also aid in the emotions that make up the painting. Though it appears dark and gloomy, the sky's warm, vibrant colors 
Make it seem like it's burning up in flames and sharpen the suffering that the surrounding nature is releasing into the figure. However, the cold tones of gray, black, and blue in the land and the water are typically associated with sadness and depression, which could reflect how he was left alone, depressed, and sick. The contrasting colors of the pale face and the dark body draw the viewer's attention to the focal point of the painting. The figure also seems to be shrouded in darkness along with the landscape covered with shadows. Light is only seen in the distance where the two figures, his friends, are moving towards, while the figure seems to be petrified in the darkness, unable to move forward. The simple, distorted forms of human figures add to the mood of the painting, adding to the chaotic, unstable state of mind that is alluded to in the painting and that Monk must have felt in the moment. None of the figures are very detailed, compelling the audience to focus on the emotions that the painting conveys, and since the focal figure is genderless, it reflects the idea that depression, anxiety, sorrow, panic, fear, and other similar emotions are feelings that all people can relate to and have experienced before. The vast, seemingly empty landscape background also escalates the isolation and fear that the figure is experiencing. Edward Monk's work is like a visual autobiography, capturing his own feelings of anxiety and representing his unstable mental health at the time. His work had a profound effect on later painters in both Europe and the U.S. and were hallmarks of three styles, symbolism, expressionism, and fauvism. It was a key work for the symbolist movement, which focused on reflecting the emotions or ideas that represent the natural world compared to realism and impressionism that portray the natural world in an objective manner. It was also a huge inspiration for the Expressionist movement, which is an artistic style that centers around depicting the subjunctive emotions and responses that objects and events create within a person, rather than the objective reality. Monk rarely paid attention to his model, developing a psychologically charged and expressive style, explaining, I do not paint what I see, but what I saw. He also aided in the Fauvis movement, which was a form of expressionism and focused on the paintings of landscapes or people where form and colors were manipulated to express something beyond the literal image of the object being painted. His influence also shows in the work of Francis Bacon, whose art reflects psychological turmoil and has skewed facial and body features. The Scream also inspired several elements found in Hollywood, such as the mask used in the Scream movie for the character Ghostface and was referenced in the famous scream by Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone, by Doctor Who in The Silence, and even by Homer Simpson. This is my recreation of the scream using embroidery. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for watching.